welcome to our first highlight show for 2016. We're out at Hubner Park for the Capital League 2 clash between Park Ridge and Slacks Creek. Slacks Creek coming away with possession in the middle of the park here through Kichkowski. Through a number of players and he scored the first goal. Wonder strike there from Brad Kichkowski. Gets around Todd Poe there in the pink boots. And Brad Kichkowski chips the keeper. And the big man has put his side one goal ahead. Again, Slack Street looking to build some momentum here to extend the lead, potentially. And again here for Myers, and they have a double. Slacks Creek 2-0 to the good inside the first eight minutes. Ball played on here for Elliot Myers. Gets in between the two Panthers defenders. The advancing keeper, Fernando Alves, powerless to stop it. And Slacks Creek off to the best of starts. Rating down the right wing now is Graham for the home side. Ball across the box there, taken first time. And Mitch Austin was flat footed, second look at it. Good take there on the volley. And had it found its target. Would have been an exciting opening here. But here come the Panthers again. And that one just slides across the face there from Aaron Hewlett. It's just over a quarter of an hour in and plenty of action here so far. Kitschkowski, the first goal scorer, clearing that one away. They found a goal back here, Park Ridge. Corners played in, touched on, and Tim Knobloch. Scored quite a few for Park Ridge last year. So first 25 minutes gone. We've already had three goals. Excitement plus at Hubner Park on a Friday night. Good here for Powell. Powell beats the keeper, tucks it away. Rubs that pink hair of his. And Park Ridge have proved once again that a 2-0 lead is the most dangerous scoreline in football. Slacks Creek had the 2-0 lead. Park Ridge back on level terms inside the half hour. Cross played in here. Oh, and Austin didn't have to make a play at the end there. A little bit too close for comfort. Here's Power again. And there's been a bit of a scuffle here. Assistance immediately in. Just off the camera. Everyone's in there to very quickly sort things out. Oh, now we see it there in the back play. There's a knee that's gone in there by Josh Graham. And oh, a bit of a punch as well was there. Now, what will be the sanction? It's a red card, straight red card to Josh Graham here. So he'll leave his side down to 10 men. In fact, both players have been sent off. So too has the first goal scorer for Slacks Creek in Brad Kichkowski. So both sides down to 10 men for the better part of 45 minutes here. So. Certainly all to play for here. As Slacks Creek look to take the lead again in the shadows of half time. Can't be too much longer to go here in the first half. Cleared away by the Panthers. Straight back to Slacks Creek. Long range shot. And Elvez tips it over the bar. Second look at that from about 35 metres out. And Elvez's intervention was certainly required. 
So two all at the break. Knoblock over this free kick here for Park Ridge. And Austin this time, a little less convincing. Tipped it onto the crossbar and thankfully it's gone over rather than collected the underside. So Tigers at the other end of the park and they find the lead for the first time in this match. Directly from the corner, Asa Harrington at back stick there. Puts it away. Tigers over the Panthers now. 3-2 with 20 minutes to play. And they're looking to take advantage here. Uh, Park Ridge, Patrick Arn composes himself. And despite the complaints of the Slacks Creek defenders, that goal will stand well on side. There's a defender back there on this side here. That was Wayne Ives throwing his arms in despair. Linesman looked to get the decision right. And Arn makes the best of the one-on-one -on -one advantage. Some complaints here to referee Nathan Scott, but I'm sure they'll fall on deaf ears. Rain now tumbling down, adding another dimension to this game as McGarn looks to spot Elvez off his line. In there by Wilson. And cleared away. Corner here to Park Ridge in the tumbling rain. Onto the back stick again. And this topsy turvy match takes yet another turn. And Park Ridge go back into the lead. Liam Klein able to get the last touch on it. Despair there from the Slacks Creek keeper in Mitch Austin. So into stoppage time now. Danger there. Still alive there on the other side. It'll be a throw in here for Slacks Creek. Time running out though to get a point out of this one though. Territory good here for the Panthers. And that'll do it. Park Ridge have come away 4-3 winners against Slacks Creek in the opening round of Capital 2. So, Daryl, tell us about uh, your childhood and your, your football as a junior. Um, I must have started around at about 9 or 10, just for a local team with my uncle. And then um, I must have been pretty good. Got scouted by Blackburn, but didn't go. Then Man City came, I supported them at the time, so I took took that on. Um, played for them for about eight, eight, nine years. Broke my leg with them, didn't work out. Trialled elsewhere, United, Liverpool. But I stopped playing for a couple of years and then I met, uh, met my agent, said I want to play overseas. So then just looked at the opportunities and Australia was one of them. So I just decided to take that on. Tell us about uh, playing junior football for Man City. What was that like? Um, it was good, obviously. Um, it was hard. I was in school three days a week, training two days a week. So I had to make sure I kept up with my education as well. But, but yeah, it, it was really good. Um, they focus a lot more, of course, on you um, and how to build your abilities and your skills. Um, I enjoyed it. When you first came to Brisbane, what did you think when you stepped off the plane? Um, it was a new experience. I've never done something like this. It was it was hot. It was very warm. I remember my first game, cramped out. I went back home, come back. My first game, I cramped out. So it's just climatising. Um, but the lifestyle of Australia and Brisbane... Yeah, can't, can't say no to that. And what do you think Rovers are going to do this year? Oh, we're going to do good. We're going to, we're going to do really good. Um, you know, last year we had a few a few areas, you know, we couldn't score as many goals. This year we've recruited a few more. Um, another player from overseas. We've also got Greg, who I believe was here a couple, well, a few years back. Um, he's looking sharp in training, so hopefully he scores more goals for us. Yeah, I think we'll do good because the back end of last year we... We had a run of run of wins, which we could have really done with 
all the way through. Um, but I don't know. I think we'll do really well. Top four, definitely. And I'm sure you'll be a big part of it. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Hope so. Okay, now it's Flight Centre Premier League action from Eric Evans Oval in Ipswich, the hosts. Ipswich Knights taking on Albany Creek. So Albany Creek looking to bring it out of their defensive half here. Eventually gets to it Chris Butler, but Sorbello forces Baker there to play it out for a corner. Got his hand on it at the last minute there, did Matt Baker. So midway through the first half and scores are deadlocked. Sorbello on there, brought down. And the referee immediately dispatches the yellow card there. Does Matt Skinner against Chris Butler there, bringing down Cameron Miller. Goal kick here from Baker. Just held up in the breeze there a little. Here's Peter. Comes down the line for Wilson. Good handy work there. Back for Peter again. Plays it more centrally. Peter at the edge of the box. Now he's inside the box. Beats Tom Sherwood. And Emmanuel Peter has scored the opening goal of this match. Peter continued on his run. Wilson was there also for assistance. But Emmanuel Peter, the South Sudanese international, able to put it away himself from just inside the box. And the home side have a 1-0 lead. So into stoppage time. Can Miller conjure something up here for Albany Creek? Saved there by Baker. They'll need to clear here, the Knights. Not effectively. Radulovic out wide on the left. Takes a deflection. Off uh, Knights defender. Ball's played into the box. And Paul McCoola has struck an injury time here for Albany Creek. And that's not the way that Ipswich Knights would have wanted to have gone to the break. So McCoola coming up from defence. Heads on. Cross the face of goal. And we're just checking with the assistant whether there was any offside. And the goal is confirmed. So hot conditions out here at Ipswich on a Sunday afternoon. That's Bowman in there for Miller. And now they have a second Albany Creek. They've struck immediately pretty much after the halftime break. Cameron Miller. Playing it back there from Darren Thompson, just outside the box. Albany Creek head out to a 2-1 lead. This is Peter again. Wilson steaming through the middle. Ball does come to him. Chests it with control. Peter been in the thick of the action. Liddy. Wilson. Liddy. Peter. Back heel there, and off the crossbar, was there a free kick or an offside decision? Looks like an offside decision. So midway through the second half, despite Ipswich Knight threatening, still Albany Creek that have the one goal advantage. Looking for a penalty decision there, looks like a tangle of feet there. And referee Matt Skinner says, no penalty. Let's get moving, boys. What of an hour to play. Here come Albany Creek once more. The turn there from Campbell. Campbell from inside the D. Puts it away. Albany Creek have a two-goal advantage now. Just under 15 minutes to play. Riley Campbell able to get around the defender. Some space there between the two Knights defenders. Baker off his line. So six minutes to play here. Wilson. Chests it down. And he puts his side back into the match. 
with just over six minutes remaining. Lucas Wilson, Sherwood tried to make himself big, but the experience of Wilson able to guide that one away. This is Johnson. Liddy. Wilson with the turn. Wilson from outside the box. And now Ipswich Knights bring it back to 3-3. Well, never say die attitude here from the boys from Ipswich. Perhaps it looked like that all hope was lost when they went 3-1 down. But Lucas Wilson with two goals in quick succession. As Baker takes the free kick. Both sides are going to have to be content with a point here. It's Ipswich Knight 3, Albany Creek 3. So let's take a look at the round one results from the Flight Centre Premier League. North Pine were 2-0 winners against Capella Bar. Mitchelton, a late goal to Ben Engie, saw them defeat Holland Park. Lions 3-1 against Rochdale. Logan away from home against Eastern Suburbs. The three-all draw and the upset of the round and maybe the year. UQFC defeating last year's grand final winners, Peninsula Power. So early doors in the table, it's Lions, North Pine, UQFC and Logan FC occupying the top four positions. Flight Centre Premier League Championship table, obviously not much to report on so far. Despite that draw in the Premier League, Albany Creek occupy second position. Just a reminder that the bottom two clubs in the table at season's end will be relegated to Capital One. So here is Capital League One now, the round one results. Grange Thistle 1-0 over Brisbane Knights. North Star 2-1 against South. Wolves by the same scoreline over Pine Rivers. Turinga away from home, 2-0 winners against Mount Gravatt. Bayside comprehensively 4-1 over Centenary. So too were Southside Eagles against Moggle. So by virtue of goal difference, Southside Eagles and Bayside United lead the way. Capital League 2, Annerley inflicted a 3-0 loss on the newly promoted New Farm United. As we saw, Park Ridge in a thriller, 4-3 over Slacks Creek. Oxley, six of the best against Redcliffe PCYC. The Gap and Acacia Ridge are winning away from home, while Brisbane Force and Pine Hills had a two-all draw. Oxley United, The Gap, Annerley and Acacia Ridge have the top four positions so far. Capital League 3 to Wong. Massive winners. 8-3 in a high scoring affair against Clairvaux. Virginia United 2-1 against Maroondu. Another high scoring affair. 10 goals between Tarragindi Tigers and Barden Latrobe. Newmarket defeated Westside. AC Carina over Jim Boomba United. While Narangbar defeated Ridge Hills by a goal. To Wong by virtue of that big win have the lead over Tarragindi Tigers. Newmarket and Narangbar on the table. Capital League 4, Caboolture are successful on their return to football Brisbane. Kangaroo Point Rovers claim the points against the newcomers Logan Metro. Greenbank and St George Willowong had a one-all draw. A draw two between Logan Village and Logan City Kings in the derby. Bethania defeated Springfield United. Sanford had the bye and will have to wait until the 6th of August to see North Brisbane and Brighton Bulldogs go around in their round one match. So Caboolture on goal difference from Bethania Rams. And in the Mount Franklin Women's Premier League, Peninsula were 5-3 winners against Eastern Suburbs. Capella Bar got the job done against Tawong. Mitchelton 2-1 against South United. Olympic were 3-1 winners against Logan FC. Annerley were 2-1 winners at Pine Hills, while the Gap defeated UQFC. So Capella Bar are the early leaders after round one from the Gap, Peninsula Power and Olympic FC. So on FBTV next week, our feature game is from the Flight Centre Premier League. It's the local derby between Peninsula Power and North Pine. The highlights show we have action from the Mount Franklin Women's Premier League between Easts and the Gap. Also, Flight Centre Premier League action on a Sunday afternoon, Lions versus Holland Park Hawks, while, while on FC11 Super Youth League, it's the Round 2 clash in the under-12s and 13s between Lions and Souths United. Thank <laughs> you.